$1.6 million um, in damages to uh, uh, Virginia families. And this trial was followed by Hernandez versus Now. Um, Hernandez versus Now was a contested trial. Here you'll see a discussion of um, the uh, remediation costs and the um, uh, award um, of $164,049.64. There was compensation for personal property, including mattresses and clothing. There was um, an allowance made for um, alternate living expenses and attorney's fees not yet um, uh, decided. There was a case that was vigorously um, fought and it did result um, in a plaintiff's uh, verdict and final judgment and the judgment was ultimately appealed. There was a third case scheduled for trial against now. This case, unlike the other two, was designed to be tried before a jury. But a few days before the trial, it actually um, um, settled. There have been a variety of state court actions. Probably um, one that has gotten quite a bit of attention down here, and actually nationally, is um, the Cyber uh, case, so which was tried by Irving Gonzalez, a Miami uh, lawyer. Um, he got an excellent verdict, $2.47 million. Um, it was tried um, against um, Banner Supply, and many of you uh, heard about the, um, the deal between Banner uh, Supply and now for now uh, agreed to um, to store um, its effective drywall and pay uh, Banner Supply a certain amount of money. It turned out that deal was kept secret for a number of years since I believe 2006. Um, Judge Fallon ordered that the um, <coughs> confidential settlement agreement be um, uh, disclosed. And um, evidence was presented showing that Banner Supply knew about the Chinese uh, drywall being defective uh, in um, 2006. In this particular um, uh, trial, there was a finding of liability against Banner. Banner was a party um, to the trial, but there were additional defendants as part of the comparative uh, fault allocation. The additional defendants um, included NAF, which was found 35% responsible, uh, and the shipper distributor were each found to be 5% um, responsible. And you'll find that when cases are tried, not all of the um, names that are entered on the verdict form are actual defendants. Um, and we'll probably have a lot of that happening here because a number of the Chinese companies are not going to step up to the plate. Um, they're really going to be in, the, in a default uh, uh, position. But um, most jurisdictions, federal court and state courts, uh, will permit it comparative allocation of responsibility, irrespective of whether or not a particular company is named in the lawsuit will ultimately be required to pay damages. All right. Um, in addition to um, uh, these um, state court actions, and there's been a couple of class actions that have been filed. Some of you have heard about the low settlement and some issues about whether or not that will interfere with the jurisdiction of Judge Fallon in trying to administer um, his, uh, his work um, in the um, MDL. Some home builders have entered into uh, remediation deals, most notably um, uh, Beezer, uh, and there's another one. Uh, Jordan, what is the other um, home builder um, against the nail? The NAR. Okay. Uh, Coverage litigation uh, is taking place. Um, there was a notable decision that uh, interpreted the pollution exclusion clause, which you find generally in these GCL policies, general comprehensive liability policies. And a judge um, in, um, in Louisiana, in Orleans Parish, found that the pollution exclusion clause did not bar coverage 
in a drywall situation. Uh, he found that the pollution um, exclusion was designed to prevent environmental contamination, and the judge found that this was really a product defect type of issue. It wasn't the conventional type of pollution associated with industrial processes, and therefore he found that the coverage was applicable. That's a huge, huge um, win um, for policyholders uh, in Louisiana. Another judge in Virginia, in a case, found that the pollution exclusion should be given effect, and he barred coverage. Um, so those are the kinds of decisions that are uh, uh, shaping up. Now, something that's recently happened, September 30th of this year, IRS issued some guidance which does provide some form of relief to uh, homeowners whose homes are uh, infected with the Chinese drywall, and um, the guidance is 2010-36, Revenue Procedure. Um, and that basically allows persons who have identifiable Chinese drywall to have to um, do uh, remedial work and pay money to have that work done. If they don't have a claim pending, they're entitled to um, deduct the cost of repair uh, by um, the full value of the repair, 100%. If they have a claim pending, then they can deduct 75% and typically one has three years in which to, to file an amended tax return for the year in which the uh, repair work as a result of drywall takes place. Um, so, uh, some issues that pertain to the MDL litigation, uh, there has been um, a letter written, I don't know if it's in the form of an order yet, but this came from the plaintiff's steering committee that all now claims uh, must be filed by October the 29th. Uh, so that's around the, uh, the corner. Is it a hard deadline? Um, we don't know. Anyway, it looks like my time is over, but I want to uh, briefly mention that a settlement, a pilot program of 300 properties has been developed. In fact, I met one of the gentlemen, uh, Mr. <coughs> Michael Bruner of Moss Construction, which is in Fort Lauderdale. Um, his firm is going to be doing the remedial work on these 300 um, drywall affected properties. If it goes well, um, the intent is to expand it to um, the states uh, <coughs> which this agreement applies, which is